Comparing it to other federally funded programs, uh, this is uh, one where I think the return is way, way uh, outweighs what other feder U.S. federally funded programs provide for the territories and the freely associated states. So. LTE is a, a grant that serves five institutions around the Pacific region. Uh, helped me fund my education and it has opened the door for me to pursue my uh, goals and dreams in life. They can continually uh, fund the school, the program, so students can uh, get the same learning experiences that I do. NSF ATE program focuses in on the community colleges from five different islands. American Samoa Community College, College of the Marshall Islands, uh, the College of Micronesia, FSM in Pohnpei, Northern Marianas College, and Palau Community College. Um, these five Pacific Islands have traditionally not had a great deal of representation in the STEM disciplines. Uh, this is something that's not really been part of their culture, um, that um, there have not been a lot of islanders that have gone on for advanced degrees in the sciences. So oftentimes, the, uh, both the jobs and um, the career paths for islanders has not included this direction. And for the most part, going back to the days following World War II of the trust territory of the Pacific Islands, most of the technology positions were filled with expatriates, people from other places who would come in, um, fill a position for a couple of years and then move on. And that was a problem for a couple of reasons. One is that these individuals were not culturally connected, so they missed a lot of opportunities to be able to use the best of traditional ecological knowledge. Uh, number two, they really didn't leave much behind. They came in on a contract, did their job, and left. So there wasn't a whole lot of capacity developed at the same time. When we first got the fund, it sort of helped us build our program by increasing number of students into the program. Um, at the same time, um, graduating students, we have numerous uh, students that have completed the program and are working in agencies in Palau, as well as completing their four-year degrees at other university. Uh, learning here at PCC have helped me find my best interest in working towards environmental issues and making sure that people have their permits before building. So after I'm done with PCC, after I get my environmental degree, I want to like move up to University of Hilo. If I could do it, and I know I could do it, then why not? Do it, to learn, get my education, and then help them. Uh, this one. Uh, so In the past, we've done things on genetics, on coastal water quality, uh, we've done taxonomy. Um, the one on climate change could not be more timely because the islands are definitely on the front line of climate change impacts. Uh, while some people within the mainland US and uh, continental Europe can still be discussing this in more of a theoretical means, um, within the islands of the Pacific, it's happening and it's already affecting them drastically. Uh, we see sea level rise uh, impacting their very limited freshwater aquifers with saltwater intrusion. Uh, we've seen severe storms coming through, flooding their very low-lying agricultural areas. We know eventually some of these islands will have to be abandoned because of sea level rise. And when you talk about disenfranchising people, you know, it's one thing to affect their culture, it's another thing to take away their very home. I asked them in class, do you really believe that the Marshall Islands will sink one day? You know, a lot of them love to hang on to their cultural and traditional beliefs and values and their religious beliefs and values and say that uh, with all confidence, no. Climate change has a huge impact on our marine, on the marine environment. And you know, if it continues, it could like really destroy our, destroy the corals, all the other 
uh, organisms that depends on the corals and you know yeah I guess I'm yeah I'm afraid that it It is an emerging issue in the Pacific and we see the impact on our island right now. The whole concept of a footlocker workshop is to help strengthen the actual infrastructure within the community colleges to bring the most modern tools to bear um, so that the students can learn how to use the technology. So as the name implies, the Advanced Technological Education Program really does focus in on bringing new technologies to the students and give them a chance to use it. So what our footlocker workshops are based on is getting tools, developing curricula around these tools giving the faculty hands-on training, and then packing everything up into the footlocker and sending them home. Simple is the way I think we all can agree. I feel I'm running out of time with my best work not complete. This getting downwelling, and one like this getting upwelling light. And those two things together tell you about the reflectivity of the reef. So if you have students that are interested in that light capture on the reef, you know, these are very versatile. much information that I can use for not just for my lectures but for my physical activities. I go out and do that field work I guess that that is something that is going to catch a lot of attention and interest. And gets us out in the field, gets us doing things, gets us collecting data and analyzing data. We have you know the hobos now we can collect temperature and light data. The first goal is to prepare students um, to finish the program and get out into the community and um, have the basic science skills. So that's our number one goal. Second is to prepare students, provide them their basic science skills so that when they graduate PCC and transfer into a four-year university, they're prepared. Some of our students have gone on to either serve as staff on legislatures, advisors to the presidents, work within these various uh, executive branch agencies, and they also have a very important role in being able to be um, ambassadors to the community. Those who have the knowledge base for climate change, global warming, sea level rise, carbon uh, dioxide uh, in the air, this information is stored at that high level that the people who are affected have not the slightest idea of what these people are talking about. You know, but after a while they hear the Marshall Islands, they hear the Marshall Islands being talked about here and there, but they, they, they have questions. So I think that it is very important that they have their own sons and daughters go out, be trained, and come back home to uh, uh, help their own people. For me, I've never, I've never gone out of Palau, so I'm kind of scared. But if it's for something I really want to do, I'm willing to like get new experiences and to take that chance just so I could learn. You're a natural resource to your community, to Palau. So what you have to do is get your education and then come back and help your community. So that's kind of what I'm striving for. When everything goes dark, only the blind will see. I feel I'm running out of time with my best work incomplete. Trying my best to sound in when I'm out of key. I feel I'm running out of time with my best work not complete. I feel I'm running out of time with my best work not complete. I feel I'm running out of time with my best work not complete. I feel I'm running out of time with my best work not complete. 
Oh yeah.